Hey, what is up? This is Nudas, this is Dudurgens here, and this is just gonna be a small correction to my Sova video, and thank you so much for, uh, let's see, uh, Per Larson? Damn, it looks like, um, I remember in college I actually had a crush on this girl whose last name was Larson. Um, obviously it's not real Larson, I'm just joking. Okay, anyway, no, no, actually that's a true story, I actually had a crush on someone whose last name is Larson. I don't remember her, her first name anymore, actually. But anyways, we're gonna do a small correction on that video. So first of all, let's look at what was the, the question in play here, okay? The question in play here is when I did 20 million times 15K, I ignored the K. So the annual treatment revenue is about 300 billion, actually. So that changes a lot of thing about Sova's base evaluation. But then I went back and looked at my notes and it turned out that in my notes, I actually accounted for the 300 billion instead of the 300 million. So this is where this math is gonna change a little bit here. So the annual revenue, uh, let's just say all white people, right? All the white people who have Alzheimer's and we treat all of them. Like, you know, if you don't know whatever I talked about in the last video, um, in this video, you just need to understand that we assume that Sova's treatment is basically really effective within white people, which then we took the entire white population in America and we do the annual treatment revenue just for white people. Okay, we discounted all Asian people, aka my people, all of the African American, aka also my people, and aka Latino people, also my people, because we are all minorities, right? So we do the $300 billion annual treatment revenue and we just assume that Soba is gonna be the market leader, right? But in reality, um, when I was doing the calculation, I actually didn't dip 0.6, I did 0.4 because I realized that, you know, stuff like AC immune and uh, stuff like, you know, Biogen and other things, their treatment is not really gonna go away. So what what really is in question here is how great their their marketing or their, their sales channel connection to all of doctors' offices are. Uh, for those of you who work in the medical industry, you know that some of those drug uh, or pharmaceutical reps, they get like a rebate or a kickback when they sell drugs or uh, so when a doctor give prescription or give this kind of treatment. Because a lot of times, um, even just, you know, um, one specific disease, you might have three sets of treatment. And then in terms of preliminary trials, all of their statistic p-values are almost the same. Therefore, no matter uh, what the patients pay, uh, pay or pick, or the doctor decides to recommend to the patient, or obviously the patient would just take doctor's recommendations, which I think is actually very unethical when doctors recommend um, you know, products and stuff that they actually have a direct financial stake in. But in reality, that happens every single day in the, in the medical industry. So, so they wouldn't control the entire market. But in here, let's just do an overvaluation. So that will give them 100, 180 billion annual revenue. But in reality, the cost of revenue is very high. So we cannot really do, um, the the actual revenue multiplier we probably want to do a cost of revenue multiplier and then because of the fact that we we probably won't get there we won't get there in five years we probably in order for a medical product to to reach for saturation it takes at least eight years so in here we're just going to take that 10-year discount so we do 180 uh, billion right divided by 10 that will give us 18 billion uh, in terms of valuation, okay. We'll get an 18 billion, sort of like a revenue-based valuation. And we probably don't wanna trade 10X revenue because the cost of revenue is fairly high. So if you go look at, um, if we go and look at, if we go and look at, if we go and look at, let's just look at um, AC immune stock. Right, if you go look at Lacey immune stock, uh, if we go look at the cost of revenue, uh, actually don't, we don't have revenue generation yet. Let's use, do use Biogen, Biogen. But again, Biogen have a lot of um, different products, right? They have a lot of the huge amount of different products and, and they, they, their diversification of their different products. Therefore, like, you know, their overhead cost is going to be significantly higher. But in here, we just want to, for the sake of this video, we just want to figure out what their revenue to net income was. So then, um, 329 million, right? And then divided by 2078 because it's in billion. So the cost of revenue, the, the, Basically, the, the actual margin from their revenue is about 15%. So in here, let's assume that, you know, Sova's margin is just a little bit better um, 
because they're, they're only doing one product. So if Sova's margin is a little bit better, they're only doing one product. Um, right here, we will just assume that, oh, sorry, I touched my phone. They're just doing one product. So then let's just assume that we take a, we take a 20. So the, let's say that their margin is 20% or, you know, they're greedy. Let's just say 50% margin. Then you will have um, 9 billion valuation. Okay, about 9 billion um, net income valuation. And let's just take, so in, in reality, a lot of those companies are valued at, so where, where does this market cap? This market cap is 33 billion, and then this is 329 million. Let's just take on um, the, the 10X revenue. So if we're doing the 10X revenue with the, with the years, let's just do that. So technically speaking, if all of these come true in the next 10 years, SOVA, SOVA's market cap should be around 90 billion, okay? And I think it's an overtly overvalued evaluation that we're giving here. But again, you know, we're trying to make a sort of like a bullish look on this since you guys are really bullish. Uh, so this is the long term price target for this. It's not really a what is the outstanding share? So there are 40 million shares. Where is my thing? There are 40 million shares. So 90 billion divided by, I'll just do million divided by 40 million equals to 2250 dollars okay this is this is actually crazy 250 dollars it's like this is the 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 highest what is funny is this is the highest and the highest ever stock price price you will ever get for silver it's 2250 okay and then if you go look at what silver is at right now it's 40 dollars uh, and we're talking about 10 years in uh, <laughs> in reality. So every seven year it doubles. Let's see, 200, 220, 15%, so 5%, so 15%. But in reality, this 9 billion net income valuation is actually just about three point, about, because you wanna do, so this is over, right? This is over bullish, over bullish, overtly, overtly, overtly bullish. Also did not count for previous loss. Okay, we didn't count for previous losses. They generated a huge amount of previous losses and we have to go in there and, and do that. But the thing is, you know, it, it rarely will get there. The probability of, of it getting there is absolutely impossible. So this is the impossible valuation we did. This is the more realistic one, okay? So you have 9 billion net, but 10, uh, 18 billion, but in reality, it's probably just, you know, 20% margin, right? That's 3.6 billion in that income. And we're doing it in perpetuity. So if we're just selling this in perpetuity, so point, I'm, 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 I'm assuming that their, their product's really good. You actually, you know, not really cure Alzheimer's, which I don't think is possible, but let's see, right? You can treat Alzheimer's really well, and then we do it as at a very realistic 3x revenue multiplier. It will give you a 10.8 billion dollar valuation. Okay, I think this is, um, this is, Valuation. This is this is actually quite good. Okay, and then let's just do. Let's go look at Sofa. So it should be traded at 10x where it's at. So in reality, so right now the the market cap is 1.58 billion. But in our case, um, the ultimate. The ultimate valuation in terms of market cap will be 10.8. So we just do a, a little bit of, well, you know what, we have a calculator. So 
six point it will be six point eight six. So it'll be six point eight six x of whatever um Silva's price is at right now equals two hundred and seventy two point six eight dollars. Okay, this is on um, if everything goes as planned, Silva market leader and etc etc okay if you're really, really bullish that you believe the operations and everything in this company will go smoothly like we assumed um this is the price target you will have in 10 years in in 10 years okay in 10 years but in reality um because it's in 10 years can we really pinpoint how much it's really worth right now it, it, it's uh it's pretty hard because they don't really make any revenue but again you know, if you divide that by two, so uh, actually, so this is one year, 2020. So when they changed their names, I think in 2019. So we were already counting for three years. There's seven more years, right? So we discount that. So we discount that by, let's see. So right now we won, but the thing is value is not realized. So then you probably want to discount that by points, by point by this amount divided times 0.7 equals where's my thing sorry uh, so realistically you're aiming for this number so you're aiming for $190 um, and then right now the highest price that we ever seen is 146 So one minus that, minus one, 23%. So that means, that means the market, the people who are willing to buy it, assuming it's not a retail frenzy that decided to, to form it that high, I mean, they're assuming that their market share will be 23% less than our assumption. So at least 23% less than our assumption. So times 0.8. The assumption would be they would get about 40% of the market, which I think is a fair uh, assumption. But again, right now, even we just use $146 as a sort of a benchmark, the highest benchmark um, for right now, consider it is a no revenue company right now, no revenue company. Um, ideally speaking, at least 80% of the value are just not value at all because they're still in developmental stage and then they are just doing their things. So, um, so ideally speaking, where it's at is around 30 bucks. So let's just do, ah, let's just do 30 bucks. Let's just do 30 bucks fair value, fair value for Sova. Okay, there you go. Um, you want my little, okay, there you go. You know, nine bucks, got a nine bucks to the bottom, dude. But most likely what's gonna happen is because everybody's trimming off their low, uh, low, low high risk assets. So you will probably will see Sova go back to like $16 or something. So, or 22. So you will have like a little range over here. And, uh, you know, if you're investing in biotech, then it's a huge ups and downs and depending on their phase two or phase three trials or all of the trials and depending on other things. And again, I'm not really a huge fan of Sova's management team. So I, I, I can't comment on how much I trust the management team to really brought the value of the company out. But again, if you really believe that it's gonna be a, 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 a it's gonna be a really great product, a treatment product, then $190 what you're aiming for and $30 would be the price that where you think you know, you want to buy it for, for a 10 year hold. Okay. We're looking at a 10 year hold, which in reality, I think is too, too big of a risk. Anyways, uh, this is it for this video. Hopefully you guys, you know, love the video, smash the like button and subscribe. All right. This is a correction video.